Welcome to another video on the fossil record. My name is Benjamin Berger, and in this video, I thought I'd review the fossil record and evolutionary history of trout. Trout, which most anglers are familiar with, is a popular group of fish that can be found in both freshwater and saltwater environments. The common name trout refers to a large number of species, genera, but most belong to the family called the Samiidae, which in, is divided into three subfamilies, whitefish, the thiamilia, or graylings, and the Samia, which includes salmon, char, and trout. Most trout live in colder freshwater rivers and lakes, with many species living in both freshwater and colder saltwater environments, exclusively in the northern hemisphere. They are mostly a cold adapted fish with native ranges that extend across the North Pacific Ocean, the Arctic Ocean, the North Atlantic, and colder rivers and lakes of Western North America, Europe, and Asia. The genus Samo extends into the warmer waters draining into the Mediterranean Sea, with several species known in Africa which are highly endangered or recently extinct, such as the species Samo paldri from Morocco. Trout are better adapted to colder waters, and their rise and diversification in the fossil record is closely related to the Ice Ages beginning during the Pliocene epoch about 2 million years ago. Hence, trout are a recently evolved group of fish with a limited fossil record that extends just back into the days after the extinction of the dinosaurs. Most modern trout have a unique genetic feature called tetraplodidae, one of the few groups of vertebrates that have multiple copies of chromosomes, four in fact. In most animals, tetraplodidae is a fatal condition which occurs when early cell division results in four rather than two copies of the chromosomes. Variations in the number of chromosomes is, a, is more common in plants, so trout are one of the few groups of vertebrates who exhibit this feature and pass on this trait with most, if not all, members showing this weird genetic feature. This unusual feature has suggested that trout in the family Samiidae evolved from a small, isolated population where this strange genetic mutation was passed down through new generations and eventually new species. One of the oldest possible ancestors is Santana Samo from the early Cretaceous of Brazil. Santana Samo likely is an early member of the Eutilias, a diverse group of fish which arose during the early Cretaceous and are ancestral to the most diverse group of living fish today, the Eutilias, which includes trout and numerous other common fish like your pet goldfish. Santano Samo does feature a slender body and elongated skull, suggesting a close affinity to modern trout, but it could also be closely related to the cupleomorpha, the sardines and herring, which is regarded by many as the most closely related group to the trout family. During the late Cretaceous, the number of Eutelios fossils increased dramatically and include a number of forms that appear closely related to trout. However, all of these late Cretaceous fossils are not placed within the Samiidae family, but seen as possible ancestors to them. They include Stomporia from South Africa, Paravinsa gorelia, and Kerm ichthys from Morocco and Sicily, Manchuri ichthys from China, Galbora, Humbertia, and Gadraella from Lebanon. There are two genera from the late Cretaceous of Canada that might be good candidates for the ancestry of trout, A. vit osmeris and Ic alcris. A. vit osmeris is a well-preserved fossil featuring a long, slender body 
and traits that would be expected in the ancestor of trout. It is known from the Northwest Territories of Canada, and despite the warmer climate during the Cretaceous, may have been a cold water adapted fish compared to Cretaceous fossils found in the hotter Mediterranean, African, and Brazilian environments. The first true member of the trout family is an Eocene fossil, Eosamo, which is found in British Columbia and Washington State, and is not known from warmer lake deposits in the rest of the continental United States, indicating that Eosamo was a cool water fish and likely, exclusively, fresh water. The fossil is dated to 53 million years ago when the climate was much warmer. Based on the fossil flora preserved in the rocks, the annual average temperature was around 52 degrees Fahrenheit or 11 degrees Celsius in the lakes that was found within. Uh, this is similar to the average temperature of the state of Illinois or of Germany today, but likely it rarely spent much time below freezing during the hot days of the Eocene because of the close proximity to the ocean. Eosamo exhibits a number of features found in modern trout and graylings, but lacks teeth along the basohyal bone. In modern trout and salmon, teeth are found along the vulmar, premaxillary, denary, and basohyal bones that form the mouth. In the 1970s, researchers found a fossil fish from Oregon in the Miocene fossil beds that exhibited large premaxillary teeth in the upper jaw and named the fossil Smilodon ichthys in reference to Smilodon, the saber-toothed cat from California. However, after numerous additional fossils of the fish had been found, the fossil is considered closely related to sockeye salmon and placed in the same genus as a unique species, Oncorhynchus rastorius. Modern sockeye salmon leave the oceans and enter into the freshwater rivers and streams where they spawn and then sadly die. This life cycle results in stiff competition among males to swim up into the freshwater streams and lakes, sometimes thousands of miles from the ocean, and fight or compete for migrating females, who lay eggs by spawning in the shallow waters to ensure the success of their fry. A dramatic morphological transformation happens in the males during this period of their lives, where their body turns bright red, becomes larger, and they develop a hump and premaxillary bone that hooks downward with sharp teeth. Study of the fossil saber-toothed salmon indicate that these fossils likely had a similar life cycle. However, the large teeth found in migrating males projected sideways rather than downward. The male fish likely used these larger sideways projecting teeth like horns to fend off other males competing for females. So the term saber tooth is a bit of a misnomer. One of the most remarkable things about trout living today is their ability to hybridize between species with viable offspring. This table shows the mating pairs of modern species of trout and salmon matched with different species. Shades of blue indicate successful fertilization of eggs and many in the darker blue and black show viable offspring that can produce a second generation. This hybridization between species is remarkable and has led to fisheries that are able to develop and breed different types of trout and salmon for anglers stocking lakes and rivers, as well as new breeds of trout for commercial fisheries and aquaculture. Much of this is likely due to the close relationship and recent diversification within the trout family. I want to thank Fred Olney for suggesting this topic and my other Patreon supporters, Brian Clever, Pablo Lozata Figuez, Arcotus 1811, Justin Bovey, Emmett Larson, and Marlo Andreco. Thank you everyone for your support.